Good morning rose lovers and welcome back to my garden and today is the 2nd of June 2024 and look at it the weather's looking absolutely glorious today and if you are living in UK uh, you probably understand the, the frustration we have and it's almost been wet and windy ever since January and very wet in May as well and finding a day like this is almost difficult as finding a parrot that can talk in Chinese. <laughs> yeah, I can almost predict the, uh, the forthcoming few months of UK weather. And it's been wet in May and it's going to be fairly wet in June. Uh, hot and wet in uh, August. And yeah, the rest we can all predict. <laughs> it's uh, a very typical thing that often we bring up the weather as a a subject of a conversation it's a very typical English so as you can see my garden is almost in full bloom and I did buy quite a few bare root earlier on in the year uh, but they're not in flower but I'll show you that later on but I'm so excited because today is a day I can't wait to show you what is in flower in my garden so uh, let's get started start off with this uh, hybrid tea rose called Pink Perfection and it is also known as uh, Beverly in other parts of the world and this is one of the, the most shade tolerated uh, rose in my garden and look at these beautiful light pink shade with a hint of white cream and yeah, that one looks, looks over and yeah these petals are quite loosely formed and this buds will stay like this for almost like a few weeks before opening to uh, to this and these blooms are one of the uh, the long lasting ones I've got in my garden and the scent is beautiful absolutely gorgeous so sweet and fruity And this is a hybrid tea and perfect ideal for a cut flowers if you want to uh, bring these indoor but I don't normally cut my flowers and this one is called Harlow Car by David Austin I will gently tease that I will gently look at this the spines on these uh, the thorns on these and these buds are small and a lot of it as well i saw this at the uh, the david austin garden center and it was absolutely covered in small tiny blood uh but <laughs> did i say blood <laughs> i meant bud but i don't really like this rose that much yeah look at it it's really tall and uh, lanky and this one is a rose called Mary Rose. A pretty decent rose. Uh, I don't detect much scent from this rose, hardly. Uh, it's doing very well, considering little sunlight it gets. And, but overall, a very, very good rose. And I am gonna swing you uh, across to have a another look at the uh, another shaded rose and this one is uh, quite a newly introduction and uh, this is called Danahue released in 2023 very tall and bushy upright and very healthy uh, and this one does have a, a light scent light to medium scent a hint of old rose with a zesty lemon fragrance and this is one of the few roses that I had to defoliate all the leaves from uh, from the plant honestly it was looking like this in December full of full of leaves and uh, I almost had to strip everything down just like uh, putting a, a little kid to sleep put it actually force it to sleep rather 
this is really an ideal rose for uh, for anyone who's looking for a, a rose for a partial shade because this will really thrive even in the container but the downside of this rose is these petals and they really don't don't last at all and drop very easily and then this one is a strawberry hill and all these all, ro all these roses are in a, a partial shade and this one are one of the, the early bloomers as well uh, I've been having a lot of flowers from this already and yet it's still giving me a, a much much more and this is still uh, its first flush and a really tall cane right to the top covered in in buds I really love this uh, this rose for the scent but the, the growing habit isn't very very pretty look at that very spindly and uh, very thin and doesn't really have many many leaves and there's another one and next to that is a rose called James Galway uh, I planted this uh, in early December and I wanted to to put it here because it's uh, partial shaded because I heard this blooms can be uh, can be burned can get sunburned so I'm gonna leave it here for a year see how it how it does and if I do want to move it it's, it won't be too difficult because it is in a pot and mum in a million beautiful clusters of pink gorgeous scented blooms and like a bouquet of flowers absolutely beautiful but isn't that beautiful because it's covered in black spots and look what happened to all the uh, the foliage on this <laughs> oh my gosh yeah ignore the the bottom half just uh, admire the top half beautiful and the scent Mmm, a scent really to, to die for. <laughs> right, I'm going to show you my uh, Penelope Lively from last year. Look at that. What a mess. It's skinny. It's brawly. But the scent is a lovely... Oh, really lovely, lovely, nice raspberry fruity scent. And look at that, more on that cane. And this was a, a potted rose which I purchased last year. And so far, I am not impressed. Even the ones at the, uh, the David Austin headquarters all look like this in the ground. And it was just literally sprawling on the ground, honestly. If I saw that rose, I wouldn't even buy it. I'm going to show you another one. This one is a, another Penelope Lively. And this was a, a bare root. And, but looking a bit different, it's got more of an upright growing habit. Uh, the stems are a bit more thicker, although it is held up by a support by a, the bamboo. Uh, this one is looking a little bit promising but it's just hard to imagine paying for a potted rose and compared to my bare root, it's nowhere as good as a bare root. And next to that is Bring Me Sunshine. And this is gonna be a, one of my favorite yellow roses. I've seen this already and smelt it already. And I'm really super impressed. And meal on the floss above here on top. And look at these beautiful, cute button blooms. And these don't open fully. Again, a very, very lanky and straggly kind of growth. And this one is called, uh, what is it? It's one of the perfumers. 
Uh, this one is called Delightful Perfumer. And lots of buds, very healthy. And I know a lot of the Cordes roses are really, really good, uh, good roses. And this one is called, you know, it's got me there. You've got me. Uh, I'm not gonna look for that one, but it is another perfumer. This one might be a, a delightful perfumer. And this one is a bliss perfumer. And look at this glorious perfumer. Beautiful, one of the, uh, the best pear roots I've ever purchased. And I really can't wait to, to see this one in flower. This one is quite a, a recent introduction from uh, Cordes. And this one is a Pacific blue. And not quite blue, but almost a kind of lilac kind of blue, but beautiful. And these petals are really quite solid, robust. And they're most likely they're gonna last quite a long time. And this one is a spirit of freedom and temporary. I'm gonna just leave it there for the time being until I find a, a good spot for it. And look at this Bosca Bell. This is my second Bosca Bell. My other one isn't there. Uh, isn't doing very well because it's, it's just so overcrowded so I thought I, I need a, a proper Bosca Bell and this one is uh, Olivia Rose Austin and it's finished the, uh, the first flush already Elizabeth by David Austin I am so impressed by this rose and when I first bought it when I first had it for the first year I wasn't really particularly impressed but really this rose has grown on me smothered in blooms absolutely beautiful rose hang on I'm just deadheading while I'm making a video I don't normally do that but I've seen a lot of people do it so uh, I'm, I'm copying them look at that really impress, impressive times three and yeah these blooms these petals really drop off quite quite easily or quite quickly uh, but that's okay because this one will keep pushing out new buds and making this uh, almost a continuously bloomer and this one here I'm gonna show you is a, a, a tell you a quick story uh, a rose called new dawn and this was a fully established plant right in the, uh, the middle of the garden. And uh, the builders just chopped it off and threw it to one side and come winter, uh, when I was about to have it disposed, I saw new, new shoots growing from the, uh, the side. And I thought, wait, hey, I thought this was dead. So when I checked to, uh, went to check on the, the end and they had the fiber roots. And uh, I thought well, I'm gonna give it a try and then try to save it. And now it's giving me new, new buds. And this is a climber, of course, but uh, there isn't anything for it to climb. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. So I've saved it from uh, extinction. And that is poet's wife, looking very, very beautiful, very healthy with a Wow, lovely, lovely, strong, uh, old classic rose fragrant with a hint of uh, zest, lemon zest, that's it. And this one is Pink Perpetual. And that white one is, guess what? I don't know but I do know this one is called Kimino Fushia. Uh, it's got a, a Japanese name, whether it's a, a Japanese breeder, I don't know, but I do like the, uh, the color. And this one in front is Golden Celebration. Look at these massive, huge blooms. And some of it is quite nodding. 
and this one isn't but look at that gorgeous with a, a very lovely lovely scent but that is a horrible sight black spots and this is almost covered this is one of the, yeah, the, the, the unhealthiest rows in my garden and I reckon at some point David Austin would, uh, would discontinue this one but this here is Chippingdale also known as Duchess of Cornwall look at, look at that these size of blooms really really long lasting solid and no scent of course but I really like this rose, really short and really compact. But this, this is a Wallerton Old Hall. I visited David Austin Garden last week and I walked away empty handed. And when I came back, I kind of felt really regret not buying one. And next day, my sister bought me another. And I'm really over thrilled by this rose the scent is oh my goodness my goodness the scent is super super strong and this is the reason why I, I went and bought another one and I'm gonna find a, a really nice good spot for it of course and swing you across here this is a peony called Sarah Bernhardt, something, and a very common uh, variety. Uh, Yves Piaget pushing out new buds. And this is Lady Gardener. What a sight. I don't know what I've been feeding this one with. I'm gonna try and save some for myself. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful, healthy, tall and uh, look at these canes really really solid really very upright and the scent is wow lovely strong tea scent I, I I'm just so happy about this rose when I first bought it and on that first year it had powder mildew and uh, since then it really never flowered for that year and anything did flower just kind of wilt and drop but this year Look at it, it really has come back with a vengeance. Wow. And give you a look from a distance. Oh, wow. And this is Grace. A very, very reliable rose. A very, very good repeater. A rose that has very good tea scent and a very, very healthy rose. You see, even that bird thinks it agrees with me. And this one is Ancient Mariner. And this is very, very similar to, uh, to Olivia Rose Austin. I could really never tell the difference apart from this being, uh, has a, a fragrance. But really look at that three, two mingling with each other. Wow. I do prefer this one a lot. And I'm just going to walk you into this uh, wild part of the garden now. And as soon as you come hit that right at the entrance is a rose called Maid Marian. And this is a David Austin rose and not a very popular rose. I don't see any, absolutely no reason, nothing wrong with this rose. A very healthy, very beautiful, and has a, 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 a good scent as well. Uh, but oddly, not many people have this rose. And I would choose this one over quite, a, quite many. And compassion. This is another rose sold by David Austin. And this is quite a, a old rose. I don't know how many years old, but very old. Uh, look at the, uh, the canes on them, super, super chunky. And 
covered in buds. And since I am here, mm, wow, lovely, lovely, lovely scent. Gorgeous, gorgeous scent. And this one is Shandos Beauty. Uh, previously, uh, this part of the garden, there was a lot of uh, uh, Japanese animon, animoni, oh, <laughs> I can't pronounce it. But yeah, I got rid of all that. And now I'm gonna try to, try to keep this maintained, uh, not so wild. And this one is a very red one, red rose, very tall. Uh, I've, I put this one in myself, but I forgot what the name is. And this one is, oh, look at another compassion. These petals are just kind of like really folding. Uh, doesn't look that nice, does it? Come on. Yeah. I, I don't like this kind of petal formation. But I'm just going to show you a molino. You know what? I've always thought this was pronounced Molinux, but someone said to me, no, it's not. How, that's not how you pronounce it. It's called Molino with a silent H. I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Molino. Uh, yeah, it has a, a light scent, but it's really tall, almost eight feet tall. Uh, makes, makes me look like a, a dwarf standing next to it. And this one is... Graham Thomas. Graham Thomas. I really chopped this quite low because it was uh, it was dangling everywhere. Right, I'm just gonna slowly move back out now. And this one is uh, another shant of beauty. I need to uh, to come back here and. Uh, work out what I need to do with this place but I have got myself an arch so perhaps I might uh, put an archway there put my uh, wallet in O'Hall and here we have Munstead Wood a very very sought after rose this is a very 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 spindly very spiky but it has a, a fantastic fragrance a bush form of Gertrude and Princess Alexandra of Kent one of my all-time favorite roses of course and I've had a three or five or six flowers since but it's still pushing out a lot, a lot, lot more. And a very, one of my favorite, favorite of all time. And an early bloomer is Rodal. A very, very good repeater and very healthy. And it has, it's been in this pot for almost God knows for four years now and who says potted roses aren't good this one is Leonardo da Vinci wow it really certainly have grown a lot since last year absolutely love this rose from top to bottom Oh my God, look at that cluster. And the good thing is these stems are very, very sturdy, very solid. So any amounts of buds on that stem will not topple over by Milan, this one. And next to that, I'm just gonna give you a, a quick example. I've got two exact same roses, okay? Same location, grown almost the same time, but look at that. That left one is so much more taller, so much bushier, and yet this one isn't as bushier. You see that? Do you know why? 
well I'm gonna tell you why it's almost like an experiment I wanted to, to try out and this one has all sorts of stuff growing amongst it uh, you've got uh, peony not peonies uh, poppies and verbena everything quite a lot basically so if you look at these two this one is really fighting for nutrient and sharing whatever I'm been giving it so it's not as a uh, not as bushy and not as healthy um, but I'm I'm okay with that because I got a lovely lovely free plant so yeah so just give you an example if you do want to uh, plant any anything along with your roses in a container and this is what uh, what do you expect it's not as it's not gonna grow as freely and as bushy as ones with with and without if you understand what I mean well I don't know I don't understand myself but <laughs> there is a, a, a Bosca Bell and really really such a shame it's in such a, a, a very com crowded environment and I don't know what happened to this bud here and it's been eaten alive and behind there is sweet honey and by Cordes do you know what I really love to give it a sniff but uh, it's too far away uh, so far it's really really very very good actually and it is quite a, a new new plant and yet to uh, to mature and this one is a Coco Loco this is gonna be a, a stunner this one as you can see by all these fresh new growth really starting to push out a lot of a lot of buds and another mum in a million and that one is Pierre de Ronsard uh, one of the, the most famous climbing roses in the world and I think everybody every rose enthusiast has this rose and it's not looking its best because it's been flowering for quite a quite a few days now but look at these beautiful blooms absolutely one of the most beautiful and again a really long lasting bloom and this is distant drums and not doing much at the moment but look at that it's pushing out new new fresh cake new fresh growth from the at the base and in a, a really perfect sunny location and I really saved this spot really just for that rose so it's gonna better be nice to me so this one is Lady Shalot this was previous put uh, Previously, it was in the pot, but I thought I uh, the pot was a bit too snug for it, so I I planted it right at the back. And there's my Wallaton Old Hall. Look at that; it really is so crowded, and I don't know what I'll do with it. Oh, actually, I forgot. And this is Jasmina. I am really so looking forward to uh, to seeing this in in, in flower. Uh, hang on, I need to. Where's the other cane? I think I, I saw four canes, and at some point I would be needing to uh, to tie this up, as it is a climbing rose. Oh, this video is getting a bit long now. I think I'm I'm talking too much. I'm far. I'm gonna zoom this very quickly now, and. Emily Bronte fantastic rose and fantastic fragrance very very absolute favorite such a beautiful plant gorgeous and I'm talking really quick now and um, this is Gertrude Jekyll and I think you've seen this on uh, numerous times now and quickly down here is uh, a very new release by Cordes called uh, Raspberry Parfumer and also known as a, a 
raspberry cupcake. This one apparently has a, an amazing scent, so I'm really looking forward to see, uh, giving that a sniff. And this one is uh, another Eustacea Vi, and pushing out tons and tons of basil shoots. Wow. Okay, moving on quickly is a summer song and beautiful. Oh, I've got to have a smell. Oh my gosh. Oh, lovely, lovely fragrance. Oh my God. It is such a nice scent. Really, really old, strong old rose. And again, it's got a, uh, lots of stuff growing amongst it, like my verbena. I'm not going to get rid of my verbena. I really love that com uh, companion planting alongside. And that's my Asian pear. I've uh, I've bagged it up to uh, to stop any insects from uh, eating my precious. Actually, did I just sound like a golem from Lord of the Rings? My precious, yes, they are my precious. And this isn't the uh, first time I've got fruits. I've had this almost three years now, and this is the first year I've seen the thumb-sized fruits on it very 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 sweet and almost like a, a butterscotch sweetness to it <laughs> right moving on quickly oh look at that and another Emily Bronte honestly I think I've got two and um, I think I need more of her uh, fantastic rose every every year really does not disappoint me a very highly recommended rose by me and probably by many many people and moving quickly down here is wow look at that Eustacea Vi I'm gonna smell this oh wow <laughs> gorgeously citrusy fruity smell look at that who isn't impressed by this and this rose was everywhere in uh, in David Garden Centre. And next to that is, oh, let me think, let me think, Bathsheba, uh, a cutting which I took from the, the mother plant in the, in the middle. I'm gonna give it a smell. No, actually I won't, I, sw I smell this one. And, oh, lovely, lovely, strong, musky fragrance. Really, really, really strong. And I'm going to smell it again. Oh, <laughs> yeah, this one is a, a cutting. I need to do something about it because uh, uh, it's not going to be good being there. Oh, uh, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, before we go move on to the next rose. And uh, what's this one? This one is called Pilgrim. And um, it is struggling, but not not its fault, of course, because it is right at the back of the. Uh, the border and uh, really fighting for space and I'm just gonna end this part uh, with this rose and this is another strawberry hill uh, which I moved from a, put, uh, from a pot and now it's in the ground so hopefully I will be able to uh, tie this all the way along that fence and I, I've had a lot of flowers on it already and as you can see I've deadheaded it Right, I think I've uh, used up quite a lot of uh, your precious time. So there you have it. There's my rose from this angle. And I'm gonna finish off with my another tour as a part two, because I've got so many roses. I think having do it in one part is just not really possible. So that's it. Garden lovers, I hope you were uh, Enjoy your tour and hope you have a lovely day.